हेलो देर क्यूरियस माइंड्स दिस इज राजेश्वरी हरगोडे अ थर्ड ईयर मेडिकल स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम जी एम सी गोंदिया आई एम दिस केस इज शेर लॉ कम लेस सॉल्व द केस मिस्ट्री टूगेदर द केस रीड्स एज अ सेवेंटी नाइन ईयर ओल्ड जेंटलमैन प्रेजेंट्स टू योर क्लिनिक विद अ लीजन ऑन इज नोज विच ब्लीज ओकेजनली एंड द फॉलोइंग इमेज वॉज गिवन डिट यू गेट द क्लूज Let's list them down. It is probably a skin pathology as no other findings have been mentioned. The skin lesion looks like an irregular erythematous plaque with some crusting on skin of left dorsum. Hence, it could be a cutaneous inflammatory manifestation like pyoderma granulosum or lichen simplex chronicus or a benign lesion. like seborrheic keratosis or papillary warts caused by papilloma virus or maybe it is a pre malignant condition like actinic keratosis leading to bovin's disease or keratoacanthosis if not these it would be a malignant lesion like squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma or a melanoma but we see that it is an erythematous patch which is non melanocytic so being sherlock we will definitely apply the science of deduction right so now we are left with pyoderma granulosum bovin's disease actinic keratosis squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma besides this we also know that skin cancers that is in our case non melanocytic skin cancers are more common in the white population old sun exposed skin with more predominance in males like the person we saw in the image our diagnosis is hence narrowed down to basal cell carcinoma or bovin's disease leading to squamous cell carcinoma so we have our differential diagnosis of cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma or cutaneous basal cell carcinoma now Are you thinking what I am thinking? How do we confirm the diagnosis? Well, I think that to reach the probable diagnosis, a biopsy of the lesion should be taken. If it is a squamous cell carcinoma, it would be cytokeratin positive. Then we would grade the tumor according to Broder's classification, depending on the number of differentiated cells, and arrive at a probable diagnosis. since the lesion presents as a flesh colored erythematous keratotic plaque with smooth nodules and everted edges similar to that in squamous cell carcinoma and no rolled borders no pigmentation no translucency seen in basal cell carcinoma the probable diagnosis should be cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma hooray we completed the first step of identifying the disease Do you know how a cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma actually occurs? It is the second most common form of skin cancer due to cumulative sun exposure and damage, especially seen in elderly white skin people with more predominance in men. It occurs following three steps. First is the initiation which occurs by the exposure to tumor initiator UVB radiation which causes structural mutagenic changes leading to irreversible alteration in the target cell that is keratinocyte which starts the tumorigenic process second is the promotion of tumorigenic process through years of chronic exposure to sunlight as we grow older where uvb radiation acts as a tumor promoter leading to clonal expansion of initiated cells and causing pre malignant growths which are actinic keratosis and keratoacanthosis actinic keratosis is disc keratosis and subdermal inflammation while keratoacanthosis is nodular and keratin filled crater the actinic keratosis may further develop into bovin's disease also known as carcinoma in situ just as we saw previously in the pictures then occurs malignant conversion 
where there is activation of oncogenes notch 1 uvr induced p53 mutation and reactivation of solar signaling pathways which help in the conversion of pre malignant lesion into a malignant squamous cell carcinoma and we being medicos only finding the cause won't help right we even have to treat the disease so the treatment if the lesion is superficial and not involving whole of the dermis would be medical management like applying topical 5 fluorouracil creams cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen or photodynamic therapy but if the lesion involves almost all of the layers we would go for a surgical excision with a 4 mm margin as the lesion is less than 2 cm by more surgery more surgery is done by removing the cancerous tissue layer by layer until no other cancer cells are left it is a time consuming procedure as each layer has to be examined for cancerous cells and only then the next layer can be removed but it causes minimal damage to the healthy tissue which allows best cosmetic and functional results according to the depth and size of the space created by removal the edges could be sewed together or a full thickness skin graft would be preferred in this procedure the skin graft is taken from a donor site which has a different blood supply initially is attached at the site of lesion and relies on the blood supply of the wound but if the graft doesn't survive other options by using local flaps could also be tried like the bilobe flap rhomboid flap nasolabial flap or dorsal nasal rotation flap or a forehead flap a ct or an mri scan would be helpful in defining the extent of the disease and we could even stage the lesion to know the prognosis so if the lesion is more than 6 mm deep or more than 2 cm in size or with a higher broader's grade along with immunosuppression perineural involvement lymphatic and or metastatic spread it would indicate a poor prognosis while the lesions less than 2 mm deep less than 2 cm in size with no lymphatic or metastatic spread would indicate a good prognosis and the recurrence rates would be high if the squamous cell carcinoma occurs at lips and ears yay we have solved the case mystery and treated the patient successfully cheers thank you so much for solving the case with me and lending me your ears these 8 minutes